It's very possible for you to build significant foot strength, but still have a sloppy right foot that won't play what it's supposed to. I'll show you why this is and teach you a better way to build foot speed that you can actually apply to real world grooves and music. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so excited you're hanging out today. I help beginner and intermediate drummers become the musicians that others want to have in their bands because they nail songs and they sound awesome. And we get there by teaching you the non-glamorous core drumming skills that get you results faster. And hey, speaking of faster results, and especially if you're coming into this lesson as a beginner, what if you could play anything you hear in your head? What if you could hear an idea, hear a groove, hear a part from a song, hear a fill, and be able to just play it? Well, that is very possible if you have four-way coordination. If you have four-way coordination between all your limbs, everything on the drums is easier and more fun. But without that coordination, everything is hard, everything is tedious, everything takes forever to learn, and you feel like you never quite have enough mental CPU, enough, br uh, enough brain bandwidth. You always feel like you're running into train wrecks and having brain farts. You can eliminate all of that by building coordination, and I've got a free PDF e-guide to help you do just that. It's called 30 Days to Four-Way Rock Coordination for the Beginner Drummer. This is 30 days of lessons, a lesson every day, just step-by-step. Step. Fine if it takes you longer than 30 days, by the way. The point is it's step-by-step, step, teaching you real-world grooves that are really fun that you can use in songs that gradually build your coordination day-by-day, step-by-step. Step. And by the way, tons of students have gotten game-changing results out of this. And something that I hear a lot is that in, in days 10 to 15, that's where the magic happens. If you can stick with it and get to day 10, 11, 12, 15, that's where you start seeing the crazy results and you're like, man, this actually works. I'm so glad I did this. I want that to be you. Go grab that guide, it's in the description, totally free. It's gonna change the game with your coordination and it's gonna help you out with today's lesson and all this bass drum stuff too. So without further ado, let's dive in. You really can practice foot strength drills and exercises all day and still get nowhere. <laughs> I say this because this was me. I, I was the kid in high school when I was trying to build foot strength. I had my double bass pedal set up and I would sit there like, you know, I was trying to, how fast can I get my doubles today? I'm gonna get these just blazing fast. How fast can I do this? And as they got faster, they were also getting quieter and they were also getting sloppier. And the funny thing was that I couldn't use them in what I was playing. I was able to play these fast doubles and get them happening and I could give myself a pat on the back for a yay, Steven, you can play your fast doubles, but what are you gonna do with these besides try to impress your friends? <laughs> and so that was the disconnect. That's where I was stuck. I could play the fast doubles because they're just, they're not that hard to play. If you work at what we talked about in the previous lesson and you're nice and comfortable the way you're sitting, you've got the beater bounce and you work on those singles, you build up the strength so that then you can play It's just not rocket science. And as you build the strength, those get easier and easier. You can play those kick doubles, but that doesn't automatically mean that you can then incorporate them. And so that disconnect, that challenge that we're often still stuck at is that lack of coordination. So up to this point, we focused on the right foot. We focused on setup, ergonomics, making sure our leg is comfortable, foot placement, beater motion, all this good stuff. But we've got to talk about coordination here. And that is the better way to really build right foot speed. If you want to build significant speed, you need to be building it within the context of how you're actually applying it, within the context of grooves and songs. That way you're building coordination because all the speed is useless if you haven't coordinated your right foot with everything else that your hands are doing. So that's where we're going today. We're gonna to practice foot speed in the context of coordination and grooves, which means you can then use this in songs and play whatever kick pattern you wanna play, which is a lot of fun. So. Here we go, we're gonna dive deep into this and uh, we're gonna take action on tying your kick into your hands and grooves as you build speed. Four steps here, four actions I want you to take. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Action step number one, the first thing that you've gotta get comfortable with doing is playing more notes on the kick drum with your right foot than you're playing with your timekeeping hand. And that's something we have to work on with the hands too to really build hand-to-hand -hand coordination. Topic for another lesson. But we wanna make sure that we are comfortable playing a lot of notes on the kick with not so many timekeeping notes. It kinda of feels upside down in a way, but it's gonna help us out a lot. So what we're gonna do is at a really slow tempo, we're just gonna go 50 beats a minute, that's super slow. We're gonna play eighth notes with our right hand on the hi-hats and 16ths on the bass drum. And you can stay within that 50 to 60 range here. So I say start at 50, work this up to 60. 16th notes on the kick drum, eighth notes on the hi-hat with the right hand. Make sure this is nice and tight. Spend as much time on this step as you need to. Spend as 
spend as much time on that first step as you need to. The focus is on getting it tight and being able to just play those repetitive 16th notes. Remember, this is exactly what we did in the previous lesson with the right foot, just playing those singles, but we're now tying it in with the right hand, making sure it's nice and tight, work that at 50 to 60 beats a minute. And then move on to our step two. So now what we're gonna do, this is where it gets kind of fun. We're gonna start removing notes down here on the bass drum. And we're now gonna do groupings of three, but we're gonna go a little bit faster. We're gonna start this at 60. We wanna do this in that 60 to 65 range. So we're doing shifting groups of three. So that means starting out, we can go one E and two E and, and so on. Then one E and a, E and a, starting on the E's. Then shift it again, starting on the ands, and a two, and a three, then lastly starting it on the uhs, a two e, a three e, just like that. So I'll show you how this will work. We're gonna do this at 60 beats a minute. Now I blazed through that really quick and I did just a measure of each, but I want you to spend as much time on each individual variation as you need to. Starting with the one E and two E and, and shift it over, spend a lot of time on the E and uh, E and uh, and so on. Don't try to do them back to back at first, though you can do that eventually. Spend a lot of time on each one individually because the point is not to put together this whole thing as an exercise, though that's fun. The point is to get really comfortable playing these groups of three, starting in different places on the beat, locking in with your eighth note timekeeping. Now, so we wanna also get that to 65, 60 to 65 beats a minute. Now it's 65 beats a minute. Let's continue removing notes and now let's do shifting kick pairs. So instead of doing groupings of three on the kick, we're just gonna do groupings of two, but the same kind of thing. We're gonna start on the beats, one E, two E, then start on the E's, start on the ands, and start on the uhs. So we've got those four different variations, again, just with eighth notes with the right hand, and do this at 65 to 75 beats a minute. Stay in that range. I'm gonna demonstrate here at 70, and I'm gonna cycle through them all so you can hear what, hear and see what this will sound like. And so same story as before, practice each of those variations, kick starting on the beats and then starting on the E's and uh's as many times as you need to, focusing on getting that locked in as we continue pushing that tempo up a little bit, getting it up to 75 beats a minute. And so at this point, what's really cool, if you've, if you've stuck with me here and you've practiced these things and you've worked on these variations, this means that in theory, you can play any pattern, anything you want to on your right foot in that 50 to 75 beats per minute range with eighth note timekeeping. Yes, I know this, is, this still feels kind of narrow, but this is an awesome place to be because most of what we play, most grooves that we're gonna play have eighth note timekeeping and a lot of fast 16th based kick stuff is not gonna happen at crazy fast tempos. This is mostly where it's gonna live. And so you can continue expanding beyond this and continue getting faster as you work out that right foot as it gets faster and that's great, but know that Solid foot technique and solid coordination is built at these slow tempos. And so spend as much time as you want to in this 50 to 75 BPM range. That's where you're gonna build all of this and then be able to go from there into much quicker tempos. You can also expand upon this and you could play alternating 16ths on the hi-hats instead of just eighth notes. And you can make this into a groove. I'm gonna show you how that would work. We can turn this whole thing into a groove by just adding snare backbeats on two and four. So really these are the two additional layers you can go back and apply to all four of these steps. The, the main layer I want you to do is applying the backbeat. So doing everything we've previously done on the kick drum with our eighth note timekeeping, but also adding backbeats on the snare on beats two and four. So then now this whole thing feels like a groove. The additional layer you could apply would be doing alternating 16ths on the hats. Pretty unique challenge. Another layer you could apply, I'm just throwing ideas at you because I know some of you are ready for this. If you're not, don't sweat it. Play the eighth notes on the ride and then practice doing beats two and four with your left foot on the hats or quarter notes on the hats or eighths or ands on the hats. There's a lot of options you can do here. And so I don't want you to, I don't want you to put this exercise in a box and be like, okay, well, I went through these, check, done, because some of you more intermediate pushing toward advanced players 
might not have that hard of a time with this, so I wanna throw you some extra challenges here. That just shows you where you can go with this. You can be in tying in the left foot coordination, so many simple exercises like this, you can take them to the next level just by adding some variation, shifting some things around, and it can really be a lot of fun and really challenge you in your coordination and your right foot's ability to improvise even while the left foot is working. So I throw that at you just as an additional challenge. If you're a beginner, don't worry about it, but some of you intermediate players just might be ready for it. Here's what these sound like if we add in the backbeats on two and four. I'm just gonna loop through some of what we've done here so you can hear what this might sound like as we add our backbeats. So grab your notation guide. I've got the notation for all of this laid out nicely for you. So you can grab that, take that to the practice room, download it, print it, put it on your iPad, whatever you wanna do, so that you can see all of these laid out and be able to know that you're practicing the right stuff. And so I hope you have a lot of fun with this. I hope this helps you out. I wanna know from you right now, so we've reached the end of this series. What is your right foot weakness? Strength or coordination? Now my hope is that if you stuck with me through those first two parts, parts one and two of this series, you built you got the strength going, and so you're on track with the strength. And so at this point, if you're running into any trouble in this lesson, that weakness very well might be coordination and not strength. But let me know, what have you dealt with in the past? Do you think that it's been more of a strength or technique issue, or has it been a coordination issue? Let me know, let's talk about it. But I hope this has been super helpful. I hope this has been a valuable exercise for you. Take this and run with it. Know that you can do a lot with this exercise. You can gain a lot of value from this and really build a lot of foot strength tying it into what your hands are doing. So your next step at this point, I can't do this for you, take all of this and apply it to songs. Go play your favorite songs. Find songs that challenge your right foot, that have a lot of driving kick drum work, like When You Were Young by The Killers. There's a lot of kick drum in that song. That'll help build up your foot strength. Any song that is fairly fast, but not crazy fast, that just involves a lot of kick, like a four on the floor song, Mr. Brightside by The Killers. Um, I don't know why I'm thinking of The Killers right now. But those are some good songs for just working out your right foot. So have fun with this, play songs, know that that is gonna be your ultimate way to build foot strength. That way you're spending more time playing. You're taking these exercises and these grooves, you're, you're building the coordination and therefore you're building the strength and the technique while you're doing the coordination and you're having fun doing the music. All these things work together and you grow faster that way. So take this, run with it, have fun. I hope this is game changing for you. Know that you can accomplish this. You can master your right foot technique so that you are playing whatever you want to play down there. Any kick pattern you want to play, no song stands in your way. You can do this. So I'll see you on the next lesson. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today. Stay non-glamorous.